In this video, we'll talk about a new and really exciting way to get better insights from your data in a more accessible and faster way. This video is sponsored by DataCamp, and today I will review their new Data Lab platform. But don't worry, you can use it for free as well. And this will be valuable regardless of your level. And to give you some context and help you understand this platform, first, let me tell you about DataCamp itself. DataCamp is an e-learning company focusing on data science skills, as you might guess by the name. I've made multiple videos on DataCamp in the past, and for good reason, because it's one of the most popular learning platforms, with over 11 million learners. It's affordable, easy to use, and they have a ton of other courses and different stuff to help you learn data skills and become a data analyst, a data scientist, a data engineer, and many more roles. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Well, it's highly relevant to the Data Lab platform that they've been working on. They know data analysis inside and out, and now they basically basically combined all of this knowledge into one platform to make it even more accessible and way easier. So in this video, I want to go through everything you need to know to decide if Data Lab is something for you and to get started working with Data Lab. We'll cover exactly what it is, its essential features and a simple product demo to show you what it looks like when working with some data and trying to uncover some insights using Data Lab. I will also cover some common questions you might have when you get started and this video will be good whether you're some somebody with some experience just looking to learn about this new platform or a complete beginner looking to level up your skills and learn how data lab works because the truth is that the landscape is changing quickly and having a platform like this can be a game changer so whether you want to use it right now or perhaps in the future you should definitely be aware of how data lab works all right let's get to the basics data lab's mission is to translate data into insights literally the goal is to break the barrier between data and these different insights from our data Data. And with these different insights, we can make better business decisions, which is really, really precious. As you probably know, data is often called the new gold because companies can get valuable data to help them improve and actually beat their competitors and make more money. Now, Data Lab itself is basically a way to lower the technical barrier, making it accessible to more people. And it can also help you do these tasks way faster. All right, so let's move on to some of the key features of Data Lab. You can do many different things to accomplish your goal of translating data into insights and data lab is built in many different features i will cover some of the most important ones you should be aware of before you get started first up on the list we have ai and ai is literally everywhere right now and it's what everyone is talking about it can definitely be a buzzword, but it can also be really useful if you leverage it properly. In this case, Data Lab has a feature where you can chat with the AI, which is basically an AI chatbot. Just like when you're writing to a chatbot, you can have a conversation, ask questions, get detailed answers, which can help you get better insights without having deep technical knowledge. Another key feature is the collaborative environment. There are definitely projects that you do on your own, but a large part of using it in companies is the ability to work with other people. Data Lab does have a collaborative nature, which means that you can work together easily and review each other's results. We also have something called a data connectivity, and this is absolutely crucial because if you have a platform like Data Lab that does not connect to suitable data sources, then it's not going to be very helpful. Data Lab can connect to lots of different data sources, and some examples include basic CSV files or different Google Sheets data, but you can also connect it to Snowflake or BigQuery and many different other sources and that is going to be a huge plus because it is very crucial to get the correct data that you need into the system so that people can analyze it and draw the conclusions that you're looking for and if you're not able to you know extract the data and actually bring it to where you need it then there's no purpose in using a tool I also just briefly want to mention something that we'll get into a little bit more later but this is going to be interesting for those of you who are more technical who want to have more control over what you're doing and who are perhaps a little bit afraid that a tool like this is not going to give you the complete flexibility and the the full control that you're really looking for. If you already know how to code and you're used to working with code, it can feel really discouraging to give away all that control to an AI or an assistant. But in this case, you don't have to do that. Just like any generative AI, Data Lab is not going to be perfect. And instead of denying that, Data Camp has actually taken the better path. They know that there might be some mistakes and they know that people want more control. And that is why Data Lab is actually powered by code. So the actual assistant writes and runs 
code that you can edit, review, and work with. You're actually not giving away that autonomy and you're still keeping the core responsibilities yourself and you can always check all the work. Now, before we get into a real demonstration, I also just briefly want to mention security. And one major concern that people usually have, especially when working with AI tools, which has been a massive topic of discussion lately, is security. It's all fun and games when you're working with some test data that doesn't really matter, but to make something really useful, you have to be willing and comfortable using actual real business data, whether that's your data or some company data. And that is why data security and data privacy in general are so vital when it comes to tools like this. To ensure this, DataCamp actually provides enterprise grade security and they are certified according to the ISO 27001 certification. And that basically means that they've been certified according to the relevant ISO standards and that they are taking the necessary actions to secure your data. Some specific ways that they do this are through encryption at all stages. And they also have some secure sign-in options and user control for organizations. For example, when you don't want everybody to have access to all of the data that you're working with at once. And again, these are just some of the many actions that they take regarding security. It is really, really important and I highly appreciate that they focus on this. So you can also read more about this on their own page. All right, welcome to a quick demonstration of how Data Lab works and its capabilities. So I personally think that the best way to learn something is by actually doing and applying it. So I'm just going to show you how it works, a very simple example, but just to give you a little bit of insight into how you can use Data Lab. So as you can see right here, I'm on this kind of main page of Data Lab, and you can access this through the link that I'll put in the description. It is very simple to access. And here you can see a couple of different things. So I've already created a notebook, but we're going to do this together as well. And as you can see over here, this is just the workbooks that you can see, or workbook, it's called workbook, not notebook, sorry. And then you can see search, databases, templates, data sets, and all of this is basically stored. So if you have something like this, you can import this, uh, connect your database, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can also see the different templates here, some different things uh, to give you an example of what you can do with the data labs and different templates, and also some test data sets that you can work with. Uh, if you want to. And many of these are from Kaggle, for example. So let's say you want to work with the video game sales data, which I've actually talked about in the past, you can just import that and work with that right away. Now, in this case, I'm going to show you an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on new workbook. And now we just created a workbook and I'll call this uh, new, new workbook, right? That's a pretty good example for a new workbook. Next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to be using these like generative AI style prompts. And we're going to click, this is basically the chat. So we're going to click on analyze ticket sales. And it's basically going to start this for us and just show us a very basic example. So you can see that when I clicked on this, it showed me how many events are happening in different cities, show the top 20 on a graph. And it basically included this data set. And you can see that what it did find out was that it's giving us an answer here. The top 20 cities with the highest number of events are held by New York City with 2,647, and this is correct according to the data, followed by Los Angeles with 312, Las Vegas 300. Very simple, but just giving us a very clear answer, which is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for the top 20 on a graph, and you can see that we're getting this right here. Now, I'm actually gonna be asking this another question, which is gonna be, can you show the top 20 cities with the most events on a graph? So let's, so let's see its abilities to graph this. Now, we're going to wait a little bit. It's going to be analyzing, writing the code, and then executing the code, and then returning a graph to us. And as you can see, top 20 cities with most events, just as we asked for. And you can see that New York City is leading here. We have Los Angeles, Las Vegas, just like the data set that we were looking at. Now, there are many different things that you could do with this data. But in our case, I'm quite curious you know, when is this data from? Do we have any information about that? So I'm going to ask, when is this data from? Or this data set does not include specific information about the time period it covers. To determine the time frame of data, we will need to examine different tables. So sure, let's do that. So now we actually receive that the data covers events that took place throughout the year 2008, from January the 1st to December 31st, 2008. And basically, it's really important here to also verify this. Of course, you want to go into the data, check it yourself. But still, we were able to get these insights very, very, very quickly. And that is kind of the, the main benefit. You're basically working with an assistant and having somebody help you out. You still need to do work, of course, and you still need to verify everything. You still need to make sure that you're doing the right thing. 
but it, it's basically like having an assistant that does some of the hard tasks for you or some of, especially some of the repetitive tasks. Now, what I'm going to be doing next is I'm actually going to click on code and I want to show you the code that it's been writing to do this. And this is very, very, very interesting. So as you can see, this is the basic code that it's been writing. You can see here that, well, this is the main data set itself for generating the, um, as you can see right here, the, this, and then you can see here that the next thing is just importing plot the, it's basically writing some Python code here. It's creating a data frame in pandas to create this graph. So it's basically being created here, then it's being plotted. And now finally, what happened was that it used some SQL code to acquire the final thing that we can see down here with the start date and the end date. And what's really cool as well is if we want to act, you know, modify something, let's say we want to set the limit to 30, we can actually do that and we can update this. We can now run the code and it's going to change it so we can see the top 30 ones. So basically that is how it works. Also, if we want to put in another city or we want to change something else or just rename whatever we want to do, we can do this. Let's say we're looking to rename top 20 cities with most events and all of these cities are in North America. So what we could do is we could put, let's say, top, where is it? Top 20 cities in, in North America with most events. And as you can see, we just run this code and there we go. And of course, this can also be modified by AI, but I just want to show you that you actually have full control over the code. And this is one of the main, main benefits with Data Lab. To get started with Data Lab and try it out yourself, you only need to create an account at Data Camp, and it's completely free to create an account and get started. And you'll be able to get up and running right away. They do also offer some premium plans for those who want to access all of the features right away. But if you want to try it out and see if it's something for you, then I definitely think the starter version will be sufficient and that is completely free to use. I'll leave a link to Data Lab in the description where you can try it out for free. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.